Do you want to take a trip back in time to a fairy tale Japanese village full of traditional thatched roof houses? Well, then make sure to visit Shirakawa Go, a must see destination in Hifu that lies at the foot of the sacred Mount Hakusan. This village is so beautiful, UNESCO even recognized it as a World Heritage Site. After many trips to Japan, I can confidently say that this Shirakawa Go day trip was the best experience ever. From the scenic bus ride through the mountains to the amazing Japanese curry at the end of the day, every moment of my Shirakawa Go day was pure magic, even though it was super hot in August in the middle of the Japanese summer. So no, you won't get the super cute chocolate box snowy Christmas type shots for your photo album and Instagram that you'd get in midwinter, but you will get amazing blues and greens that were so vivid and bright it was hard not to wear really dark sunglasses all the time because this village is stunning in its summer clothes. So what is it that's so special about Shirakawa Go that makes it worth the effort of getting there? Well, for those looking to go off the beaten path in Japan, this is the place to be. But you will find it's also extremely popular and busy with lots of people thinking exactly the same thing. So it's kind of a paradox. It's idyllic nature makes it pretty overcrowded in peak periods. So you're gonna need to time your visit carefully. Nestled in a mountain valley of Gifu Prefecture, Shirakawa Go is a village that's been around for a thousand years. The area's remote location shielded it from the ravages of Japan's history, allowing the gasso style farmhouses to be preserved in their beautiful and unique state. And Shirakawa Go was considered worthy of addition to that UNESCO World Heritage List in 1995. Before we get into Shirakawa Go itself, how do you get there? Well, here's the catch. No train stations are close to Shirakawa Go. Instead, you have to either catch a highway bus or drive yourself, which means you need to plan ahead and be up for an adventure to come here. Trust me, the additional effort is absolutely worth it. The best way to reach Shirakawa Go is by bus from Takayama. You can catch a bus to Shirakawa Go from the Takayama bus center and the journey takes around 50 minutes and you must have an advanced reservation to ride the bus. Look up the schedules and prices for Nohi Bus and book your seat on their official website. Make sure you do this in plenty of time. You can book your seat 30 days in advance and in busy periods, these buses sell out their spaces quickly. For example, I jumped on the site as soon as the seats became available and by the time I finished my booking minutes later, half the seats on my bus were already sold. And when I was in Shirakawa Go, every bus leaving that afternoon was fully booked out. Now don't forget to save a copy of the confirmation email on your phone or print it out before you leave on your journey. You'll need to show it to the driver to confirm your seat when you get on the bus. Now the bus terminal in Takayama is very close to the train station. The bus stops have signs in Japanese and English find the one that says Shirakawa Go. It's usually number four, but that could change. Now, if for some reason you're bringing luggage on your Shirakawa Go day trip, there is room to store it below the bus. But just a heads up, there's not much room to store your luggage in Shirakawa Go as there is limited locker space. So try to avoid bringing too much. I got the first bus to get the best chance of getting an empty locker when I got there, so you'll need to be smart about it. There's a small building behind the bus information center where you can pay to store luggage, but space is limited. Now, I highly recommend catching the first bus, no matter where you're coming from. The village gets packed with tourists as the day goes on, and it can totally lose its charm if you're stuck behind the crowds pouring out of tour buses around noon. You can also easily do a day trip to Shirakawa Go from Kanazawa with the express bus. It's only about one hour and 25 minutes each way. This is the route I took when I left Shirakawa Go, but more about that later. Now you're here in Shirakawa Go, what can you do? The Gasho Zukuri village, I'll come back to that, will take you back to ancient Japan. But be sure to head up to the Shirayama Observatory to start your day and see the village from up high and enjoy the nostalgic scenery. This spot, built on the old Ogimachi Castle site, 
is perfect for snapping panoramic pics of Shirakawa Go with the mountains in the background. It's free to get in and really spacious, so you won't have to push through crowds to see everything. It's about a 20 minute walk from the bus terminal, but if that's not an option for you, there's also a shuttle bus that will make the climb up to the observatory for you. It leaves every 20 minutes from the bus terminal and costs 200 yen. Okay, now you're back down from the observatory, start at Shirakawago Ogimachi, which boasts the biggest cluster of Gaso Zukuri style houses in Japan. Now Gaso Zukuri means built like hands praying because the steep thatched roofs of the farmhouses resemble the hands of Buddhist monks in prayer. The design is meant to handle lots of snow in winter and has been passed down for generations. They also work well to keep the places cool during summer. Every house is a stunning example of skilled carpentry. Each beam fits perfectly into the next one with no need for nails. Despite being in an earthquake prone nation, these houses have stood since the 1800s thanks to their sturdy construction. And the roofs had a large attic space where they used to grow silkworms, which was definitely an industry in this area. The Gaso Zukuri houses are like museums that tell you about the history of the region, the unique architecture. A few of these homes serve as guest houses and provide lodging options if you wanted to stay overnight, experience the local hospitality, and what the village feels like once the day trippers have moved on to their next destination. Although the thatched roof A-frame buildings steal the spotlight, it's the breathtaking landscape that truly makes Shirakawa Go a must visit. Few places in the world can match the village's unique and timeless appearance with its towering pine trees, rice paddies, undulating streams, and snowy mountain backdrop in winter. But one of the best things about Shirakawa Go is getting off the beaten path and exploring the little side roads. The best part of my trip was strolling through the peaceful paths to old houses and small shrines. Although the main roads have the most impressive attractions, there are many delightful gaso houses and cozy scenes to explore away from the designated tourist routes. Now make sure you don't miss out on Myozenji, the largest shrine in Shirakawa Go village. Myozenji, including the hall, monks residence, dates back to 1748. Everything in the village is within walking distance and will take you around two to three hours to visit the whole village. But you may want to take longer, lingering over the beautiful views and maybe visiting some of the attractions like the Heritage Museum. And you'll need to eat too, so I'd budget more like five to six hours to make the most of your time here. Now, the Heritage Museum is across the suspension bridge, which is worth visiting itself. And this is close to where the coach stores come and go from the village. The history of this is that in 1968, the villagers in the Kazura district wanted to sell and move gasso style houses from their village. Now these unwanted gasso style houses were relocated and reconstructed here, and it now functions as an open air museum. This whole area, which is also the area where visitors who arrive by car start their visit, is an area all of its own with places to sit, relax and eat as well as walking down to the river and just hanging out there too. While it is possible to explore Shirakawa Go in a couple of hours to fully immerse yourself in the tranquil ambience of rural Japan and leave behind the demands of modern living, take a more leisurely approach and plan to spend the whole day here or even overnight you can stay in one of those lodging houses, but be sure to book this well in advance and line this up with your bus plans too. I left at late afternoon and had my trip to Kanazawa before I moved on to Kyoto. Join me for the next episode of my seven day Japan itinerary here, and I'll see you there. <laughs>